Hello viewers! As part of the series in Basic Concepts in Organic Chemistry, today we will be discussing orbital hybridization. Let us first define what hybridization means. So hybridization is the mixing of atomic orbitals that lead to the formation of new orbitals, equal number of mixed orbitals which have new shapes and energies. The shapes of the hybridized orbitals are different uh, from the atomic orbitals as well as their energies are also different. Now, as an example, we will be discussing the hybridization in carbon atom because carbon is the central atom or the most important atom in organic molecules. So, we will be discussing the hybridization of carbon today and as you know that it belongs to the fourth group in the periodic table and its electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2 and 2p2. So, we will see its electronic configuration on an energy scale so its ground state electronic configuration is like the 1s orbital has two electrons it is filled the 2s the higher energy orbital has two electrons it is filled and the 2p orbital you already know that the p orbital has uh, three sub orbitals that is px py and pz each can accommodate two electrons so a total of six electrons can be accommodated in uh, the p orbital but in case of carbon it has only two electrons in the p orbital which means that the p orbital is incomplete and to accommodate uh, these two electrons we have to place them separately in different orbitals having similar spins now as you know that uh, only those electrons which are unpaired can be involved in bonding so looking at this uh, electronic configuration of carbon, you would think that only two of its electrons can be involved in bonding, which means that carbon can form two bonds using its two unpaired uh, electrons. And for that reason, carbon should have been divalent. But as you see in molecules having carbon atom, the carbon is tetravalent. So to discuss its... Uh, tetravalency the concept of hybridization was introduced which is a mathematical phenomena uh, w explained through quantum mechanics using uh, making use of the uh, of the wave functions of these electrons and orbitals in carbon so this is the ground state electronic configuration of carbon but when it's going to form a bond it gets excited and during that process one of the electron jumps from the 2s orbital into the 2p orbital and now as you can see here in the excited state it has four unpaired electrons and now you can see that uh, it, it can form four bonds but still the energies of this s and p orbitals are different so in the excited state its orbitals uh, mix up together they combine together to form new orbitals which we call the hybridized orbitals so any number of these 2p orbitals combine with the 2s orbital to form hybridized orbitals which have different shapes and different energies from the atomic orbitals and these orbitals these hybridized orbitals are then involved in bonding uh, in case of carbon atom or in in case of any other atom as well so carbon can have different hybridizations let us first discuss the sp3 hybridization as its uh, name indicates uh, this is a type of hybridization in which one s orbital combines with three p orbitals from here to form four new hybridized orbitals which we call the sp3 hybridized orbitals remember one thing that the number of hybridized orbitals formed are always equal to the number of atomic orbitals uh, mixing together to form those hybridized orbitals so if we are going to mix one s orbital with three p orbitals 
that means we are mixing four atomic orbitals so in total four hybridized or four sp3 hybridized orbitals will be formed now let's see some uh, two of the uh, interesting facts here you know that this p orbital is dumbbell shape it looks more or less like this and the s orbital has a spherical shape now when these two different atomic orbitals combine together to form these uh, sp3 hybridized orbitals their shapes are distorted so they no longer look like spherical or dumbbell shape in fact these hybridized orbitals are drawn like this it more or less looks like a dumbbell but you can see the difference in the two uh, one of the lobes of this hybridized orbitals is larger and the other is smaller in case of a p orbital having this dumbbell shape both the lobes are of uh, more or less equal size another interesting fact about these hybridized orbitals is that on this energy scale you can see they lie between the 2s and the 2p orbitals so which means that the energies of these sp3 hybridized orbitals are lower than the p orbital and higher than the s orbital which makes up together to form these orbitals and which means that their energies lie somewhere between the energy of the p and the s orbital but their energies are similar to each other so they have similar shapes and similar energies among themselves but different from the s and the p atomic orbitals so let's see an example uh, in which carbon uh, is sp3 hybridized so a very simple example is that of methane the methane uh, has one carbon and four hydrogens the molecular formula is ch4 so because we are discussing this as an example of sp3 hybridization you know that carbon here is sp3 hybridized and sp3 hybridized orbitals are four in number so this carbon atom in methane must have four sp3 hybridized orbitals and this is how they are placed this carbon atom has four sp3 hybridized orbitals and as you saw in the previous slide each of these sp3 hybridized orbitals has one electron which means they are unpaired and available for bonding so in the molecular formula you can see there are four hydrogens so one hydrogen combines uh, each with uh, with each of these uh, sp3 hybridized orbitals sharing uh, their one s or uh, electron with the one electron in each of these sp3 hybridized orbitals so this is how a molecule of methane is formed and this is how you draw it right now the geometry around this carbon atom is tetrahedral why it is tetrahedral or why the bond angle between these hydrogens is 109.5 degrees is because of the fact that when we have four sp3 hybridized orbitals each having one electron they tend to be at maximum distance from each other to avoid any uh, um, uh, repulsive interaction between uh, electrons so to, ha to have maximum distance from each other they uh, exist at an angle of or they form a bond angle of about 109.5 degree which we call the tetrahedral bond angle and the geometry produced as a result is a tetrahedral geometry Now, how would you know that uh, whether a carbon is sp3 hybridized or it has some different hybridization? So when you see that a carbon forms four single bonds, single covalent bonds, then it means it is sp3 hybridized. Let's see another type of hybridization. Now, carbon can also be sp2 hybridized. And again, as the name indicates, uh, this hybridization occurs when one s orbital combines or mix mixes with two p orbitals now because we are mixing one s with two p orbitals 
it means that we are mixing three atomic orbitals so the resultant hybridized orbitals would also be three in number so we mix two p orbitals with one s to get three sp2 hybridized orbitals and again their energies will be different from the p orbitals and s orbitals and their shapes would also be different as we saw in the sp3 hybridization but what you see here is that we are left behind with a 2px orbital having one electron here so this is left unhybridized and two of the p orbitals are used up in uh, forming the sp2 hybridized orbitals uh, these three orbitals will have similar shapes among themselves different from the p and s orbital but this p still has a dumbbell shaped and similar energy now let's see an example in which carbon atom is sp2 hybridized so in, as an example we have ethene the molecular formula is c2h4 now here in the molecule we have two carbon atoms so remember both of them would be sp2 hybridized and the number of sp2 hybridized orbitals are three so each of these carbon atoms will have three sp2 hybridized orbitals and these two carbon atom form a single covalent bond by the linear overlap or head-on overlap of one of their sp2 hybridized orbitals so they form a bond here a sigma bond is formed by the head-on overlap of the one of the sp2 hybridized orbitals uh, provided by both the carbon atoms and each carbon is left with two unbonded sp2 hybridized orbitals so you can see in the molecular formula there are four hydrogens as well so one hydrogen each combines with each of these uh, sp2 hybridized orbitals uh, using their one electron to form a bond with the 1s electron of hydrogen atom so sigma bonds are formed with the four hydrogens in this way but you have to remember that we also have an unhybridized p orbital left behind in the carbon atom now if you count the number of bonds formed by each of the carbon atoms so here this carbon atom has formed one bond with this carbon a sigma bond here and two bonds with two hydrogens so this carbon has formed three bonds similarly this carbon atom has formed three bonds and as you know that carbon is tetravalent so it has to form one more bond and that bond is formed by the sidewise overlap of these two unhybridized p orbitals present on both the carbon atoms so we have a sigma bond between the two carbon atoms and then we have a pi bond formed by the sidewise overlap of the unhybridized p orbitals so this is how a molecule of ethene can be drawn we have a double covalent bond between the two carbon atoms one of these covalent bonds is a sigma bond the other is a pi bond now the geometry around each of these two sp2 hybridized carbons is trigonal planar and because we have three sp2 hybridized orbitals so again they tend to be at maximum distance from each other and to do so they attain a bond angle of about 120 degrees uh, between themselves and how would you know that carbon is sp2 hybridized when you see a carbon double bonded to another atom another carbon atom or another uh, oxygen or nitrogen then you say that it is sp2 hybridized a carbon can also be sp hybridized now in sp hybridization one p orbital will combine with one s orbital to form two sp hybridized orbitals we are mixing two atomic orbitals to form two sp hybridized orbitals and we are left behind with two p orbitals which are unhybridized again having 
one electron each now let's see explain this with the help of an example so an example of carbon uh, in which its hybridization is sp is that of ethyne the molecular formula is c2h2 so again we have two carbon atoms and because it is sp hybridized or both the carbon atoms are sp hybridized both will have two sp hybridized orbitals this carbon has two sp orbitals this carbon also has two sp hybridized orbitals and they form a bond a sigma bond again by the head on overlap of one of their uh, sp hybridized orbitals and each of the two carbon atoms uh, are uh, is left behind uh, having one unbonded sp hybridized orbitals and you can see in the molecular formula there are two hydrogens so both these hydrogens combine linearly again with uh, these sp hybridized orbitals on both the carbon atoms forming sigma bonds here and so each of the two carbon atoms now have formed two bonds one with the hydrogen and one with the other carbon atom but again you have to remember that each carbon has two unhybridized p orbitals left behind now these p orbitals uh, tend to be uh, perpendicular to the hybridized orbitals uh, in case of sp2 hybridization as well as in sp hybridization so if we consider these two S sp hybridized orbitals on a horizontal plane the unhybridized p orbital would be perpendicular or placed on a vertical uh, plane like this and they can overlap sidewise to form a pi bond now each of the two carbon atoms now have formed three bonds one with the other carbon one with the hydrogen both sigma bonds and one pi bond is formed by the sidewise overlap of the unhybridized p orbital but we have another p orbital left unhybridized with both the carbon atoms so that second unhybridized p orbital would like to be oriented perpendicularly to both the sp orbitals as well as to the other unhybridized p orbital so its orientation is somewhat like this and because both are parallel to each other they can overlap sidewise to form another pi bond and now if you count this carbon atom has formed two sigma bonds one with the carbon one with the hydrogen and it has formed two pi bonds with the other carbon atom and the same is the case for this carbon forming two sigma bonds one with carbon one with hydrogen and two pi bonds with the other carbon atom so this is how a molecule of ethyne can be drawn there is a triple bond triple covalent bond between the two carbon atoms one of these bonds is a sigma bond as you can see here and two others are the pi bonds as you can see here from the uh, sidewise overlap of the unhybridized p orbitals if you look at the geometry the geometry is linear and because we have two sp hybridized orbitals so to have maximum distance between them they tend to be at 180 degrees from each other and that is why the geometry around each carbon atom is linear now, if you want to know whether a carbon is sp hybridized you just see if it is triple bonded to another atom then its hybridization would be sp hybridization now, this is how the concept of hybridization can be explained or the tetravalency of carbon can be explained with the help of hybridization i hope it helps thank you so much for watching stay tuned